friends change lives as we tell our different stories we are capable beautiful we are born to do great things we're unstoppable incredible cause we're differently abled differently there and a very warm welcome to Ebo Differently, a program where we take charge. Today we focus on the individuals who are contributing positively to the society. I am your host Ruth Mweni. Stay tuned. Because we're differently abled, differently. Tela Mwende is a volunteer teacher, something she does with passion. Take a look at her story. Stella Mwende Wambua is a firstborn of four siblings. When she was six months old, her mother came to realize that her daughter was not in a position to see. Nilipofikia katika umri wa kujielewa, nilijipata ya kwamba niko katika hali hiyo. Baada ya kuuliza, wazazi wakanieleza ya kwamba ulemavu huo ulikuja nikiwa na umri wa in curiosity to know what had befallen their daughter, Stella was taken to Machakos, later referred to Kikuyu Hospital, but nothing was done. Hilo walimpima, wakaniambia ni kama wawa wawezi, nikeleke Kikuyu. Hile nilienda Kikuyu, wakapimu. Wakaniambia hiyo macho wakuna kitu inaweza panyiwa. Kwa hivyo ni mpeleke shule. Schooling for Stella kicked off well. She went to Thika Primary School of Visually Impaired Persons from class 1 to 8, then later on went to Meru High Special School, where she concluded her secondary education. I went to Ketui. I was able to go to Ketui. I was able to go to Thika. Kutoka class 1 mpaka class 8 nimesomea Thika Primary School for the Blind lakini high school nikaja kusomea St Lucy's Meru mpaka form 4 ndipo sasa nikachukuliwa nikaenda Machakos Teachers College nika train kama P1 teacher Career choice was driven by her interest in teaching pupils, which she learned at Machakos Teachers Training College and graduated in 2019. Currently, Stella has volunteered as a teacher at Star of Hope Primary, handling integrated students. Kwa sasa, mimi nimejitolea kufunza watoto pale Star of Hope Primary School kwa vile nili graduate mwezi wa pili tarehe nane mwaka huu na nikaamua kwenda kusaidia wanafunzi katika shule hiyo on a day to day life stella goes through lots of hurdles in school and also when commuting from one place to another huko hakuna facilities za kutumia material hakuna and then challenge nyingine ni kwamba vitabu Vile ambavyo sisi tunastahili kutumia via braille, hakuna. Hapa around, ku, kutoka shule mpaka nyumbani ama kutoka nyumbani mpaka shule, katikati ya njia hizo kuna mitaro ambayo inafanya ulimwengu uwe unfriendly to disabled people. Again, wakati mwingine unaweza pata kuna Waka... uh, unaweza pata kuna gari ambazo zimepakiwa around na maybe hakuna mtu ambaye anaelewa ya kwamba hapo kuna mtu ambaye ako na disability kama hiyo yangu The support system is evident as Stella hopes to do great things for students by giving them guidance and counseling Apart from teaching I'm able to guide and counsel people out there and also to help the others 
to know that it is important for them to live and also to work hard in their academic life and also in the co-curricular activities so that they may be in a position of helping themselves in life. Attending birthday parties with her colleagues and helping students are some of the happy moments. Wakati ambao niko happy ni wakati ambao niko na colleagues wangu wakati tunacheka na kusaidiana katika kazi ya shuleni na hata nyumbani wakati ambapo tuna zungumza kuhusu maneno ya kifamilia ama wakati kuna happy moments kama birthdays birthday parties christmas and all those good moments on the other hand being taken advantage of because of her disability are some of her sad moments mtu amechukua advantage ya disability yangu ku kufanya tu chochote yani akaniudhi kama kwa mfano mtu uh, akapata sioni akaamua kuchukua chochote tu ninacho miliki ndipo saweze kujisaidia kama mimi mwenyewe sina hiyo know-how trying as much as possible since disability is not inability is Stella's parting shot to those able differently wajaribu njia zozote zile wajitafutie riziki after all disability is not inability na wale ambao wako shuleni wajaribu kujikaza kimasomo wajizatiti kabisa kulingana na uwezo wao naye Mungu hata waangusha Let's take a short break. We'll be right back. Don't go too far. Cause we're differently abled, differently. Welcome back. He has been at the top management of the Kenya National Association of the Deaf for some time now. And he has seen several positive changes done for the welfare of the deaf. Here is his story. He was born in a family of seven children. Nixon Kakiri lost his hearing while he was still a young boy. His parents tried to restore his hearing by all means, including rituals, but all in vain. He's, I'm from a family of seven, and I, I am the firstborn. I have three brothers and three sisters. And I'm the only deaf person in my family. So when it comes to my education, Growing up, uh, I, grow, I, I grew up being, being deaf and my parents were not aware of what comes or what happens when it comes to deaf education. So they, they tried other rituals, traditional rituals, uh, to, to, to try and uh, help me heal with my grandparents. At the time, Deaf schools were not well known by many, and so he received his early education at a regular school. As in used to, to go to school, but I was not going at the moment. By then, I, I, I even did, did not have clothes, so I used to, to follow my cousin as they go to school. So when the teacher noticed me and talked to me, I couldn't re, re, uh, respond and the teacher came me, so I ran back home. Later on, my, my mother, my, my mother on his uh, family side uh, decided to, to take me to, to my, my, my grandmother's home, and it's from there that I joined school. So I started with a hearing school and communication was a big challenge because teachers were using verbal communication and I couldn't hear. When kids were playing and 
responding to what the teacher was saying, for me, I was left out in that. Challenges became the order of the day, from his fellow students discriminating against him to teachers giving him a hard time. So, uh, I used to, to study more uh, the, the, the story of, of Tom and Mary in, in, that, uh, in that book, uh, looking at uh, the boys, uh, explaining about uh, boys going to school. And uh, I tried learning from, from that. It really did help me uh, get language in terms of English. But when the teacher was teaching, normally the teacher was using voice and that was a challenge for me. So most of the time when the teacher ha was done teaching, I used to, to, to ask other, other kids to help me because when it came to dictation, I used to miss out. Like when you, the teacher voices like thank you, then you have to, to write. Uh, when they say a particular word, then you, you had to, to write the, that particular word. For me, I couldn't participate in that, so I used to sit around. So normally the teacher could count the number of pupils in class, and for instance, if the, the, the pupils were 30, then our teacher found out that if the exercise submitted were 29, it means that one was missing. So when he's giving out, he's giving back the, the exercise book, we found that that was the one missing, and I, I, I got punished, I used to get punished for that. So later on, uh, they, they, were not, they were not concerned if I could hear or not hear, the, the assumption was that I was rude. So my fellow people could, could uh, play around with me, like call me, cause, because I can't hear. When, 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 for instance, we are playing football and running around the pitch, the, the kids could, could uh, maybe when, when they are like passing the ball around, they are talking. So I, I'm, just, I'm just running and I don't know like, the communication that they're having around. Sometimes I could get pushed around. And uh, I had difficulties to responding when people were, 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 calling, were calling me. So uh, people could like joke with me and call me like, hey, I want to, to show you something and tell you something. Come, come and see. So when, when you look at where the cow dung is, they force your face into it. Uh, it, was, it was quite uh, difficult for me to to, to interact in, in the here in school, I used to get upset really fast. Even though I was very uh, eager to, to learn. So you A teacher who took interest in his case at the time changed the course of his life. Kakiri was transferred to a deaf school that saw his education shift to a whole new level. Learning became fun and his grades improved. One time, uh, uh, one of my teachers who was looking at me wondered what, what is the issue with me. So one time, the teacher called me and when she was talking to me, I couldn't uh, respond. So she felt bad and informed the administration and after that, the class setting was changed, and I used to sit in front. So I used to depend on my reading uh, uh, lips. I can't forget the word uh, sim symptoms. So when they were, so the, when when uh, when they were uh, voicing the word symptoms, I, I used to try to 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 follow the mounting and practice the same. So it's from, from, 
that system that I, I, I used to learn. And later on, I, I, I joined Kuja uh, School for the Deaf. When I joined, uh, I found that all other learners were deaf and the interaction was quite uh, comfortable. For several years, Kakiri worked for the Kenya National Association of the Deaf as the Secretary General in Nyanza region. While at it, he had an interest in empowering the deaf, but a friend of his managed to convince him in taking a different approach that eventually was ideal. I joined the uh, Kenya National Association for the Deaf, uh, uh, the, the, their branch that was in South Nyanza. Uh, when I joined the association, I was voted as the, the Secretary General and I worked there for seven years uh, advocating for, for the rights of deaf people in the Nyanza region. Because sometimes pol police could uh, uh, beat the deaf persons and this was duly because the deaf people could not respond when uh, they were being called by the police. So we, we, we did advocate for awareness around the region. Then one time I met with uh, an American person who had come to, to volunteer working with the deaf people, with, uh, with an organization in Homer Bay. So when we were interacting with, with him, uh, there, there, there was a particular area that had a mountain uh, and I, I had an idea that I wanted to, to, uh, to start a business there uh, and the business was to be called Silent uh, Hotel and the intention was to employ the deaf people. When I shared that idea with him, he told, he told me that, um, you know, we need to, 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 en to encourage the deaf people to have a future. When he went back, he did a story on his experience in, in Kenya. And uh, he, he lobbied for funds to help support deaf education. A once-in-a-lifetime chance presented itself. Kakri flew to Australia and made a remarkable presentation about the death and AIDS. Sending shockwaves among those in attendance, little did he know that his presentation will get him a four-year fully sponsored scholarship. So I continue working up to around 2000. Then I, 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 I was awarded with a, a scholarship by Gallaudet University uh, Presidential Scholarship. So I was to fly to, to America for, for studies. And that is when I left the organization. And I went to Gallaudet University. I did my studies for four years. And because my scholarship was full scholarship, and during my studies, after one year, I got also another uh, uh, scholarship as the first recipient uh, of a full scholarship from a World uh, leader, Deaf Leadership Program, and which included also uh, some uh, tickets from America to Kenya and back, and sponsorship for research in terms of uh, development assistance desired by deaf Kenyans. At this point, we shifted gear and looked at the challenges faced by the deaf during the corona pandemic, which he gladly highlighted and also challenged the relevant authorities to deliberately interact with the persons with disability communities in curbing the virus. At the moment, accessibility is, is, is important at this time when we have a coronavirus outbreak because people think we have uh, because we have sign language interpreter that is all 
what they forget is yes for the sign language interpreter sign language is their second language but for a deaf person in a rural area may not understand this level of standard sign so they need to have a deaf person who can be directly involved to help communicate to that deaf person in the rural area hmm? because we see sometimes police do come hard on a, on a deaf person because there was a time uh, I was out at around 6.30 uh, the, 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 there is uh, a deaf person in Mumia's area who, deaf, who, who met with uh, a police officer and police officers decided to hit him very bad to an extent that he was bleeding and we have the same issues out there of deaf people who have zero access to information. In Nairobi, uh, Nairobi has, is more developed in terms of technology and other avenues of communication, but in village, most people are using radio communication and with this one, for the deaf people cannot access. So we are asking the Ministry of Health should really try to work closely with us so that the, the report and information that they are giving out can be more accessible. Kakiri's parting shot was on keeping safe during this pandemic. So we, we, we try to, to do our best out of government system, try to, to, to work with friends who who uh, access, uh, who accept to, to assist us because the fear is at the moment most deaf people can become victims of this pandemic and because of how they interact they may spread the, the pandemic, the, the virus without them, them knowing. Because we're differently abled, differently Today's profile we focus on Oscar Pistorius, the first amputee to compete in the Olympics. Take a look. Oscar Pistorius had often said that he is motivated not by an urge to make history, but by a desire to compete against the best runners in the world. He achieved this by becoming the first amputee to run in an Olympic race in the year 2012 and confirming his place among the world's elite athletes. The four-time Paralympic champion who underwent an amputation process on his leg below the knee as a baby due to a congenital defect finished second in his 400-meter heat in a time of 45.44 seconds to reach the semi-final. The first amputee to compete in track at the Olympics, Pistorius Chris passed an opponent or two in the backstretch of his 400 meter heat, and by the end, the Blade Runner was coasting in for a stress free success. The double amputee who runs on carbon fiber blades and whose fight to get to this point has often felt more like a marathon than a spirit, walked out of the tunnel looked into the stands, saw his friends and family there, including his 89-year-old grandmother, who was carrying the South African flag. Pistorius is an accomplished runner with four Paralympic gold medals, but he waged a long fight to run in the Olympics against abled body opponents. After dozens of hearings in front of hundreds of men and women in suits, charged with the task of deciding whether the blades gave Pistorius an unfair advantage, then getting this, then getting his country's Olympic committee to accept his qualifying times and enter him into the games, Pistorius finally got his chance and proved his ability beyond disability. Cause we're differently abled, differently. Let's take a look at the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disability.
Article 6 of the UN Convention states that state parties recognize that women and girls with disabilities are subject to multiple discrimination and in this regard shall take measures to ensure the full and equal enjoyment by them of all human rights and fundamental freedoms. We have come to the end of our show for today. Remember to stay safe, have a lovely, lovely weekend and a fruitful week ahead. I've been your host Ruth Mweni. Bye-bye.